Good evening and welcome to this service of evening prayer. I hope that you have had a good and peaceful day. The world, our communities, our families and ourselves are at the moment part of a very uncertain and unpleasant story. But there is good news in the story of Jesus, which is why we gather together, albeit in separate places, to pray. In the Eucharist, we say that the Lord is here, and he is. He is here with us, and this virus will pass. And so, my friends, let us, rather than focus upon all that is bad around us, be drawn into the presence of our Lord Jesus, who is able to surround, defend, and heal us. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and in your faithfulness give ear to my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for in your sight shall no one living be justified. My spirit faints within me. My heart within me is desolate. I stretch out my hands to you, and my soul gasps for you like a thirsty land. O Lord, make haste to answer me, for my spirit fails me. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Show me the way that I should walk in, for I lift up my soul to you. Teach me to do what pleases you, for you are my God. Let your kindly spirit lead me on a level path. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring me out of trouble. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. And so this evening's psalm is Psalm 69. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up even to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters and the flood sweeps over me. I have grown weary with crying and my throat is raw. My eyes have failed from looking so long for my God. Those who hate me without any cause are more than the hairs of my head. Those who would destroy me are mighty. My enemies accuse me falsely. Must I now give back what I never stole? O oh God, you know my foolishness and my faults are not hidden from you. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, Lord God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be disgraced because of me, O God of Israel. For your sake have I suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up, the scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, I make my prayer to you, O Lord, at an acceptable time, O God. Answer me, O God, in the abundance of your mercy and with your sure salvation. Draw me out of the mire that I will sink not. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the water flood drown me, neither the deep swallow me up. Let not the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, Lord, for your loving kindness is good. Turn to me in the multitude of your mercies. Hide not your face from your servant, and be swift to answer me, for I am in trouble. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
Our first reading this evening is taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, and you and all this people into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea in the west, shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I shall be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. And so be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. God reckons as righteous those who believe, who believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. For Christ was handed over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ we have gained access to the grace in which we stand, and rejoice in our hope of the glory of God. We even exult in our sufferings, for suffering produces endurance, and endurance brings hope, and our hope is not in vain. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us, God proves his love for us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his death, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? Therefore we exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have now received our reconciliation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. Our second reading is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 4, beginning at verse 46. Then he came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had changed the water into wine. Now there was a royal official whose son lay ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and he begged him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, Sir, come down before my little boy dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. As he was going down, his servants met him and told him that the child was alive. So he asked them the hour when he began to recover. And they said to him, Yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. The father realized that this was the very hour when Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. So he himself believed, along with his whole household. Now this was the second sign that Jesus did after coming from Judea to Galilee. Fear me not, forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, and be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. And we say the Magnificat together. You have scattered the proud in their conceit, and lifted up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. 
My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have scattered the proud in their conceit, and lifted up the lowly. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, in this time of uncertainty and fear, Increase in us the ability to see beyond that which is negative and look towards being a part of all things positive. Surround us with that peace that transcends all understanding, the peace of Christ which guards our hearts and our minds. Please give us an ever-increasing sense of your presence and our desire to meet us wherever we are. Raise up within us an urgency to dwell in the shadows of your wings, trusting in your promises and expecting to see their fruition. All-knowing and all-powerful God, give to our scientists the knowledge they need to crack this virus. Give all those in power the wisdom required to make decisions that will be in the interest of all, especially those who are vulnerable. As we draw to the end of this day, Lord, grant us your peace and at the last, the safety of your everlasting home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heal us, O God, from all our afflictions and keep us steadfast in your love. Bind up our wounds, raise us from death, and lead us to fullness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.